In the 50 years since the 1969 Apollo 11 moon landing, that feat continues to inspire generations of new astronauts. One of them joins us right now from NASA's Johnson Space Center, Joe Acaba. And, and Joe, thank you. It's good to see you. Good morning, Becky. It's great to be here. You were just two years old during the Apollo 11 mission. Obviously, that's too young to remember while it was happening. How did you eventually learn about NASA and the moon? Yeah, so you gave away my age, but uh, yeah, I was just a couple <laughs> of years old when it happened, so obviously I didn't remember that. But uh, when I was probably about five, my, uh, my grandfather would show me the old reel-to-reel -reel film of the Apollo missions, and as a five-year-old, I didn't know if that was real time or not. So that was really the first time that I was introduced to that you know, incredible feat, and that's kind of where the seed was planted uh, to become an astronaut today. So the Apollo program cost $177 billion in, in terms of today's dollars. What's the return on investment on that? And what do you think are some of the coolest inventions and innovations that we've, we have in our lives today as a result? Yeah, I mean, it was a, a, a great investment. And, you know, if you were to look at all the things that we use today, whether it's with our cell phones, whether it's with medicine, uh, you know, in your car, all of that comes from the investment that we put into the space program. I, I was reading through, I didn't even realize those thermometers you put in your ear to measure your temperature. Even that came from something that was originally developed for, for space travel. It is pretty cool, and NASA always puts out the, uh, the spin-offs. When you look at all of those spin-offs, it is definitely worth the investment that we put into the space program. Hmm. Before you joined NASA, you were a geologist and then a school teacher, which is a really weird transition. How'd you wind up becoming an astronaut? Yeah, it definitely was not maybe the more traditional route. Uh, again, <laughs> I was a geologist and I was teaching uh, middle school in Florida. And someone had told me that NASA was looking for educators to become full-time astronauts. It's one of those things where it's this opportunity to live this childhood dream. And so I said, hey, let me just apply for the job. And luckily I was uh, fortunate enough, one of the three educators uh, to get hired in 2004. And that's kind of where it started. So school teacher to astronaut, it's pretty cool. Joe, you've spent almost a year in space. What, what would you describe that experience like? What was it like taking spacewalks when you were outside the International Space Station? Is it really quiet? Um, it's uh, it's kind of quiet, and doing a spacewalk, it, it's pretty intense. Uh, when you go out for the first time and you look down and you see the Earth 250 miles below you, you know you're not going to fall, but it takes your brain a mm. couple of seconds to realize <laughs> that if I let go, I'm okay. Uh, it's, uh, it's quiet outside around you, but you're always in communication with uh, mission control and also with your partner that you're out there with. So the communication keeps going on, but there are times when Nobody's talking, and it's just you in space looking at our Earth, and it's just a, an incredible experience. I never thought about the idea of first stepping off and realizing that you're going to float, but not kind of mentally being there just yet. Was that really scary? It, I, I won't lie. It's scary. <laughs> and, you know, you get out, and you're hanging on to that handrail. You put a tether down so you won't go anywhere, and just let go and just let your brain really believe that you're not going to fall. But it's, it's an important step to take. So I can only imagine those guys taking that first step, you know, 50 oh. years ago, oh. where you know it's just a step, but it's the first one. So that, that's pretty cool to think about. I would have peed my pants. Did you? Um, luckily, I didn't. But if I had to, I would have been prepared. <laughs> Hey, Joe, NASA and private companies are, are both moving space travel forward at this point. How, how do you think that works, the public-private partnership? you think that's better, uh, a better way to actually fund space exploration or not? I, I think it's the, uh, the best way to go, and that's always been the intent of NASA. We start things. Going to space is very difficult. Uh, NASA has the expertise. We have the ability. Uh, but really, the whole purpose is for us to get it to the commercial sector so it frees up NASA to do things that are even more difficult. And for us to go to the moon, to go to Mars, it absolutely has to be with partnerships with, uh, with private companies. You mentioned Mars, and obviously that is the next great frontier. Uh, there's no way I would sign up to do that, but then again, there's no way I would sign up to go into outer space. How about you? Would you go to Mars? I would go to Mars in a second. Oh. Um, it's probably outside of my professional career, and so, you know, to go to the moon would be incredible. But, Becky, I think if you had a chance, a chance to go to space, you would love it. It's an incredible experience. And like we heard on the, uh, on the report before I came on, 
hopefully everybody will have this opportunity and people will look at astronauts just like, uh, like everyday folks. So I would love to go and if you have uh, the young viewers that are being forced to watch your show this morning, I hope they get excited by the <laughs> Artemis program the right and that they're the ones walking on Mars someday. Well, Joe, we are not there yet. It is not commonplace that I just want to say thank you to brave folks like you who are willing to go out there and do this. I, I give you all the praise for what you've done. Um, it's incredibly impressive. And thanks for your time today, Joe. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Okay. Take care.